Hello friends, welcome to UGC EPG Patshala, myself Dr. Chandri Banerjee, Assistant Professor in the Department of Geography, BSR Government Arts College, Alwar, Rajasthan. I shall speak on humanistic geography, which is part of the paper, Geographical Thought. And in this module, the, the model has been proceeded with the following objectives in mind. First and foremost, objective is to study the concept of humanistic geography and how it developed over time. Secondly, to understand the basic tenets of humanistic geography, particularly its themes and methodologies, as well as its different approaches. And finally, the objective is to present a critical analysis of humanistic geography. Coming to the development of humanistic geography. Humankind as an agent of change on the Earth's surface was first identified by Comte de Buffon as early as in the 18th century. Inspired by his ideas, Immanuel Kant developed his physical geography that was essentially anthropocentric in nature and content. According to Kant, physical geography not only included the phys features visible on the Earth's surface, that had been created by natural processes, but also by human actions. Kant was also of the opinion that empirical knowledge could be obtained in two ways, either through pure reason or through the senses. Senses again could be divided into inner senses and the outer senses. The world as perceived by the inner senses is the seal or the soul or mensch meaning man, while as perceived by the outer senses is nature. Kant's concept of anthropocentric geography was subsequently adopted by Karl Ritter in his famous book Earth Kunde, in which he asserted that the central theme of geography should be the element of reciprocity that exists between the natural phenomena and humanity. The human approach in geography was however popularized by the French geographer Paul Vidal de la Blache in 1899 with his introduction of a new dimension to the possibilistic philosophy. In fact, he may be regarded as a father of modern human geography. He advocated genre divide, a concept akin to human culture that has been inherited and developed over time to convert natural possibilities into elements of fulfillment. Nature was conceived as a mere advisor and humanity as an active force of change. Blush's possibilist philosophy was carried forward by Jean Brunens throughout France and other parts of the globe. His main emphasis was on the exploitation of the earth by humankind for satiating human needs and desires. It was however the French historian Lucien Fabre who is actually credited for coining the term possibilism. In his geographical introduction in, to history who, uh, that he accorded to the Vidali Vidalian tradition of possibilism, he put forward that humankind emerged as a powerful agent of modifying the earth's surface through centuries of their accumulated labor and decision making. In 1924, American geographer Carl O'Sawyer propounded his landscape paradigm in which he highlighted on humans as agent of fashioning the natural landscape. The discipline of geography has undergone several paradigm shifts and revolutions over time. The 1920s witnessed the revival of the positivist philosophy. The result was a theoretical and quantitative revolution in geography in the 1950s. Schaeffer's critic of Kant's exceptionalism and his, the introduction of his spatial organization paradigm opened the door for such revolution. However, in the 1970s, there was yet another revolution in geography, which was basically anti-positivist in nature. It came to be known as the 
critical revolution as its origin was rooted in the criticism against the positivist quantitative spatial tradition of geography. The effort was on replacing the quantitative methods with a variety of humanistic approaches, which was sup supposed to ascribe a pivotal role to humankind in the subject of geography. This was to be done by particularly focusing on human awareness, human consciousness and human creativity and freeing human beings from the geometric determinism. Thus, the modern humanistic geography was mainly an outcome of the growing dissatisfaction against the quantitative revolution that was prevalent just before it. Effort was made to revive the normative statements of values, attitudes, beliefs and so on. It aimed at what can be called verstehen, that is understanding humankind within the surrounding environment in which humankind by using his rationality can improvise on their conditions of the lives. The proponents of humanistic geography asserted that it should not be considered as an earth science in its scope and content. Instead of viewing geography as a study of the earth, it treated geography rather as a study of the earth as the home of humankind. Hence, the main focus was on how humans perceive the place they inhabit through their thought processes, consciousness and experiences. Humanistic geography sought to be more than a mere critical philosophy, however. Therefore, Anne Butimer in 1978 attempted to revive the Vidalian tradition and asserted that any spatial unit should be studied from a local perspective which was similar to Blush's concept of pace and with a historical approach. This was possible because some affinity was discovered between Vidal's La Geography Humaine and Humanistic Geography. However, there were grounds of departure between the two. Firstly, Blasche considered human geography as a natural science and many of Blasche's work in fact contained the elements of functionalism which the humanistic geographers would renounce. Humanistic geography also contained elements of neo-Kantianism and pragmatism in, its, in it, owing to its allegiance to human consciousness and experience which were reflected in human actions and which in turn directed in, were, were directed towards alleviating human problems. Though humanistic geography started on the same platform as of behavioral geography, the two soon parted ways as humanistic geography according to Entrykin concerned itself with the subjectivity of both the researcher and the, the things which were to be investigated. It digressed from the formal structures of behavioralism because behavioral geography was supposed to have a strong connection with the positivist spatial tradition and was rather an outgrowth of this tradition. One of the first geographers to advocate humanistic geography was the Irish geographer William Kirk as early as in 1951. He published his ideas in his essay, Historical Geography and the Concept of Behavioral Environment. But perhaps the time was not appropriate since by then geographically, geography was greatly inspired by the positivist tradition to initiate the quantitative revolution. Later in 1976, it was Wai Fu Tuan who argued for humanistic geography as concerned with people and their conditions. He opined that humanistic geography sought to achieve an understanding of the world through an insight into the human nature relationship and the geographical behavior of humankind as well as their perception about space and place. Geographical activities and phenomena were treated as manifestation of human awareness and knowledge. After the 1980s, humanistic geography 
advanced further from its early position of a critic of positivist philosophy to attack on structuralism. At the same time, it developed an insightful methodology for empirical research. Two prominent streams of work were identified in humanistic geography. One stream tried to connect with the humanities by investigating knowledge that emanated from human feelings and experiences regarding being a human on this planet, while the other stream tried to connect with various philosophies of human and social sciences. Coming to the approaches to humanistic geography. Humanistic geography was developed as a conceptual perspective that highlighted on the thorough understanding of human environment relationship, particularly on the basis of individual or group awareness and experiences regarding different spatial units and related geographical phenomena. The main emphasis of this philosophy was on humans as a rational being with the power to think and perceive rather than as mere responders to stimuli as was presented within the positivist and behavioral framework. According to geographers Lay and Samuels, humanistic geography incorporated a wide range of philosophical approaches within it ranging from idealism, existentialism, hermeneutics to phenomenology. The connection with pragmatism and uh, humanistic geography has already been mentioned. At the same time, it is human geography that ascribes uh, a central role to human beings, a people's geography with human development as its prime objective. Humanistic geography imbibed in it the philosophy of existentialism that urged on human quality and subjectivity. It was based on the premise that existence comes before essence, which implied that humans existed first and thereafter was responsible for his every action on this planet. It stressed upon personal freedom, personal decision making and personal commitment. In other words, the purpose of humanistic geography in its affinity with existentialism was to analyze the existential space as occupied by humans and the ways they defined their relationship with their space. This approach was essentially historical in that it attempted to reconstruct space through the experiences of its denizens. As a counter to postulates of positivism, Leonard Gulke propounded the philosophy of idealism and urged the human geographers, especially the historical geographers, to probe into what humans as decision makers believed in and not why they believed. Thus, human geographers should engage themselves in developing theories as pertinent theories already were present in their minds. Humanistic geography, inspired by the idealist philosophy, upheld that reality was basically a mental construct and a pattern of human behavior was actually a reflection of the underlying ideas. Idealism, according to Guelke, was based on two propositions, a metaphysical proposition which asserted that an idea or a mental construct had a particular duration which was, however, independent of material, material things and processes, and an epistemolo epistemological proposition which believed that knowledge was derived indirectly from the subjective human experience of the world and was an outcome of human thoughts and ideas. Idealism was basically a sort of hermeneutics that dealt with the theory of interpretation and clarification of meaning and was developed in the German tradition of human science. The connection between the objectivity and subjectivity of human discourses 
led to what may be called as double hermeneutics. Hermeneutics was applied in contrast to the positivist spatial science methods as advocated by humanistic geography through a presuppositional approach directed by social conscience. It provide, provided an epistemology that aided in restructuring regional geography by speaking of the spatio-temporal aspect of a region. At the same time, it expressed its concern regarding any spatial unit with respect to its culture as developed by humans occupying it over time, particularly the language. In the 1970s, another philosophy that was more popular among the human geographers was than idealism was phenomenology. Though the term was first used by Sawyer in the 1920s, it became widespread in the 1970s when Relf tried to introduce the approach within the geography. The objective was similar to the above approaches that is to present a critic of the positivist tradition. It presented an alternative to positivist philosophy that was based on the premise that there can be no objective world without human existence. Kirk in 1963 identified two different yet mutually dependent environments. A phenomenal environment that included everything on this planet and the behavioral environment that was perceived that was the perceived and the experienced part of the former that is the phenomenal environment. Phenomenology in geography was concerned with the phenomenal environment the elements of which were considered distinctive for every human being since it was the outcome of individual perception and action. Therefore, the phenomenological approach in geography sought to explore how individual human being structures the environment in a subjective way. <clears throat> Humanistic geography has been based on several themes and several methods have been adopted in it. Humanistic geography originated as a perspective against that form of human geography that was reduced to an abstract study of space and structures. Sometimes humanistic geography because of according central role to humans could be used interchangeably with humanism. But precisely it was mainly concerned with the outcomes of human activities. Geographers Lee and Samuels has stressed that humanistic geography was based on three basic precepts. First, anthropocentrism, subjectivity and the concept of place. Humanistic geography did not consider humans as mere economic man, but attempted to investigate as to how geographical activities and phenomena were a manifestation of human awareness and creativity. As a propounder of humanistic geography, Thuan identified five major themes of humanistic geography. The first was geographical knowledge or personal geographies. Now, since humans are rational beings with the ability to think and perceive this concept or theme was considered as very important in humanistic geography. The main task of the humanistic geographers therefore was to study the ideas and thoughts that emanated within the human mind since these ideas constituted geographical knowledge. Each and every human being possessed such knowledge though their perception varied and they utilized this geographical knowledge for this for their biological survival. Hence geographical knowledge was conceived as personal. Secondly, it was the role of territory and creation of place identities. As mentioned earlier, the sense of place was an intrinsic part of humanistic geography. Every human being occupied and utilized some space with which they developed a strong sense of emotional bonding or attachment. Much of his biological needs 
were satiated in that space. Hence, a particular space constituted the territory of humans, which was not only a confined area in its literal sense, but a place with which human beings identified themselves. And it was here that the humanistic geographers stepped in. The third theme was crowding and privacy. Crowding of a place resulted in the physical as well as psychological tensions and stress which were eased out by cultural, social, institutions and infrastructures. In a similar way, privacy and seclusion also influenced the thought processes and actions of humans. Privacy was thought to be required by every individual within which they were supposed to develop their own personal world. The fourth theme was the role of geographical knowledge in determining livelihood. For sustenance, it is believed that humans engaged themselves in economic activities and he utilized his geographical knowledge for deciding his economic activities. Thus, he planned his action for sustenance, which was considered as an essence of pragmatism. And in doing so, he was in a, posi in a position to distinguish between what may be considered as life-sustaining and life-destroying activities. The final theme was the impact of religion, which was supposed to be subjective and associated with the normative elements of values, beliefs or ethics. Religion was conceived as the desire for coherence, which varied with individual humans and culture. And this variation provided a field of investigation to the humanistic geographers. Apart from this, four conceptual and methodological themes may be identified in humanistic geography. According to humanistic geographers, Human life and experiences were regarded as dynamic and multivalent that had cognitive, attitudinal and emotional elements attached to them. Humanistic geographers asserted that the task of a comprehensive human geography was to identify these elements and understand how they contributed to human experiences and actions, as well as how each of these elements were connected to each other, be it in a supportive manner or as contradictions. This may be made clear, uh, as has been expressed in the words of Tuan, that every individual human was at the same time a biological being, a social being and an unique personality. And all these three aspects were a function of the environmental perceptions, attitudes and values. Secondly, since human experiences were indefinable, humanistic geographers departed from the scientific methods employed under the positivist regime in which everything was to be explicated and verified empirically through using statistical techniques. On the contrary, humanistic geographers adopted the ontological epistemological perspective to encompass a much wider range of experiences, which would create a framework within which investigators would be able to study the experiences of their subjects with greater, greater precision. Thirdly, humanistic geographers advocated that humanistic geography should originate from self-knowledge and first-hand experience of the investigator. At the same time, it should also incorporate the experiences of the others ranging from others, I mean ranging from people, places, any natural phenomena or any aspect of human environment relationship. This approach of humanistic geography brought them in sharp contrast with the objective approach of the quantitative paradigm in which the experiences of the researchers were greatly minimized. With regard to this, Tuan asserted that through an understanding of geographical experiences, individuals developed a sense of environmental humility and acted more 
compassionately towards other humans and the place and the place or the environment which they occupied. Finally, humanistic geography employed the usage of two complementary research methods. One that involved the explanations of the experiences. This was based on a multitude of descriptive sources like first-hand experiences of individuals, archived reports and literature, evidences gathered through photography, films or any other forms of media. Its emphasis was to highlight the commonalities that existed in experiences related to a place or an environment. The other method that involved the interpretation of the social world was based on philosophical arguments rather than experiential evidences. It involved a wide range of philosophical traditions ranging from existentialism, pragmatism, idealism to post-structural Marxist approach. Like other philosophies in geography, even humanistic geography was not free from criticisms. Human experience and human actions have always been the focus of humanistic geography as it has been mentioned before. Its central thesis was to provide, was provided, was grounded in the criticism that was rendered against positivism. Humanistic geography ardently highlighted upon humans as living, thinking and acting being and insisted that human conditions can only be suggested through humanistic endeavors expressed in human attitudes, impressions and sense of place which otherwise cannot be articulated through the positivist methods. However, the first and the foremost criticism that was put forward against humanistic geography was that the researcher was not in a position to ascertain whether the real and the true explanations have been provided or not. It is true that humanistic explanations cannot be established with certitude, but this again could provide a field of criticism, especially for the positivist quantitative approaches where everything was verified empirically and thus had a greater certainty. In fact, the natural sciences whose methods were adopted by the positivist regime were mainly compo comprised of theories that were abundant through further research which in turn enhanced the scope of study and resulted in more authentic and powerful theories. But with humanistic methods, this was not possible. Secondly, on methodological grounds, humanistic geography differentiated and distinguished between physical and human geography as two separate branches of geography which diluted the core of the subject and gave rise to some sort of dualism in the discipline. This dualism sometimes proved to be detrimental in the development of the geography as a whole. Physical geography according to humanistic geographers mainly dealt with inanimate objects and so its methods were mainly scientific and the phenomenon, phenomena there could be mathematically verified. On the contrary, since human behavior was difficult to predict and it varied over space and time, such quantitative techniques were not always of use in human geography. However, humans as a prime focus of human geography and environment as that of physical geography were not mutually exclusive but rather related and as a subject matter of geography as a whole emphasized one could not be studied independent of the other. Humanistic geography was also criticized for being methodologically obscure since its main focus was on subjective rather than objective research. Though humanistic geography attempted to combine several philosophical traditions along with an incisive methodology, yet as pointed out by Entrykin, it failed to provide a suitable and viable alternative to the scientific methods. 
and therefore it could it could be better described as some kind of critical philosophy that originated against the positivist tradition and to revive the humane element in geographical research. Thank you.